How much did you know about what your chief of staff was doing with the alternate slates of abductors? No, you're not. I can see your phone. I can see your screen. Does your chief of staff still work for you, Senator? That was Republican Senator Ron Johnson presumably pretending to talk on the phone in order to avoid answering questions from reporters. And man, was that awkward. To his defense, your phone screen does go dark if you're talking on the phone, at least I believe if you're using iPhone, but you can tell that he was faking it because, you know, if you have a conversation, you're going to end the conversation and say, okay, let me call you back. Hang on a second. Um, I'm trying to listen. He just casually pulled the phone away and then pretended to hang it up. Very, very cringeworthy and bizarre behavior. But, you know, you only engage in that sort of suspicious behavior if you have something to hide. Now, since he was called out for faking a phone call, he had to answer some questions. Now, I'm going to show you what he said, but first, I want to explain to you, in case you missed it, what was revealed at the last public hearing by the January 6th Select Committee, because he is now implicated in Trump's scheme to overthrow the election. Documents produced to the Select Committee show that the Trump campaign took steps to ensure that the physical copies of the fake electors' electoral votes from two states were delivered to Washington for January 6th. Text messages exchanged between Republican Party officials in Wisconsin show that on January 4th, the Trump campaign asked for someone to fly their fake electors' documents to Washington. A staffer for Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson texted a staffer for Vice President Pence just minutes before the beginning of the joint session. This staffer stated that Senator Johnson wished to hand deliver to the Vice President the fake electors' votes from Michigan and Wisconsin. The vice president's aide unambiguously instructed them not to deliver the fake votes to the vice president. Even though the fake elector slates were transmitted to Congress and the executive branch, the vice president held firm in his position that his role was to count lawfully submitted electoral votes. Joseph R. Biden, Jr. of the state of Delaware has received 306 votes. Donald J. Trump of the state of Florida has received 232 votes which is what he did when the joint session resumed on January 6th after the attack on the Capitol. Now, whether or not there's culpability there with his chief of staff or if his chief of staff was a co-conspirator, that has yet to be seen. But if I'm Ron Johnson and I know I'm innocent and I know that my chief of staff is innocent, what I would say is, OK, you know what? I didn't know about this, but I unequivocally denounce what my chief of staff did. He did not follow proper protocol. He should have reported this to me. Um, we're launching an internal investigation to get to the bottom of this to see how far my chief of staff went in trying to overturn the election. But he doesn't do any of that. I instead, he feigns ignorance. He's incredibly dodgy and he acts really, really suspicious for someone who claims that they're completely innocent. Take a look. Can you explain what happened there? Why was your chief of staff even offering this to the vice president? That's a complete non-story. We've issued a statement. And this is a non-story. I, I don't know what you're, what you're even concerned about. Well, they said that Did you, you were, your chief of staff is saying that you offered, my, 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 you wanted to tell, no, provide no, 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 alternate no, electors of no, Michigan and Wisconsin this, this, to Vice President Mike Pence. This, this was a staff-to-staff -staff exchange, and I was, you know, basically unaware of it. And the chief of staff contacted the vice president's staff said so, do you want this they said no and, and we didn't deliver it and that's the end of story but why was he even asking for that because somebody delivered this to our office and asked to deliver that to the vice president did you support the his efforts to try to get those slates to the vice president no, I, I i had no knowledge of this who's who's the person i, I know you know I, I had no involvement in an alternate state of uh, slate of electors i had no idea this thing would be delivered to us got delivered staff to staff my chief staff did the right thing contact the vice president's staff uh, they said didn't want it, so we didn't deliver it. Who's the person? That's, again, that's the end of the story. So as you saw, he was being conspicuously dodgy, playing dumb, but I just don't believe him. I'm sorry. Republicans lie all the time. They have a reputation of compulsive deceitfulness, and I just, I don't believe them. Are you honestly telling me that you had no idea about what your chief of staff was doing? If you genuinely were ignorant to what was happening around you, then that shows that you're a bad leader because you didn't know that one of your staff members was engaged in a plot to commit election fraud and overthrow the election. But I mean, your question, your answers here to these questions don't really make sense. Oh, this is a nothing burger. We've released a statement. 
hang on a second because there's so many unanswered questions and you really seem uncomfortable answering these questions. I mean, you tried to fake a fucking phone call. So tell us more. Who delivered the document? You said that somebody delivered the document. Who was that individual? You said that um, your chief of staff is the one who's implicated. Sure, that's what the hearing exposed. So why didn't your chief of staff notify you of this plot to overthrow the election and instead just tried to give these to the vice president? And your chief of staff also implicated you, to be fair, and said, hey, Johnson needs to give this to the vice president. So there's a lot here that he doesn't want to tell us, and his behavior is incredibly suspicious. Now, because of this expose by the January 6th Select Hearing Committee, well, there are now calls for Ron Johnson to resign, and rightfully so. As Brett Wilkins of Common Dreams explains, quote, Ron Johnson actively tried to undermine this democracy. He literally tried to hand Mike Pence fake ballots, Wisconsin Lieutenant Governor Mandela Barnes said in a statement. Once again, Ron Johnson has proven he's a danger to our country and our fundamental rights. I'm calling for him to resign immediately. State Treasurer Sarah Godlewski argued that it is clear Ron Johnson is a threat to our democracy and is unfit to continue serving in the United States Senate. Former state lawmaker Tom Nelson called Johnson a criminal and a traitor who should be prosecuted. Quote, he must resign, Nelson added. Milwaukee Bucks executive Alex Lasry, also running in the primary to oust Johnson, tweeted that Trump and his MAGA allies planned, promoted, and paid for a seditious conspiracy to overturn an election they lost. And Ron Johnson attempted to deliver it to D.C. on a silver platter. Yeah, and they're absolutely correct here. And they're correct to call on him to resign. Does that mean that he will resign? No. I mean, he's not going to resign. But still, for his chief of staff to now be implicated, for him to now be implicated, and for him to be this ignorant, it just doesn't add up, right? So uh, let's assume for a second that he genuinely did not know that his chief of staff was trying to deliver fake electors to the vice president that his chief of staff did not let him know that he was the one to deliver this to the vice president. Don't you think that with this investigation, with the potential of this being exposed by the select hearings, that his chief of staff would come clean to him at least? No. So something's not adding up here, and he looks really fucking conspicuous and guilty. So the extent to which he can be prosecuted, again, we don't necessarily know, but you can tell he's sweating. And for good reason, because he looks really, really guilty here. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today. Mike is a total shit lip. Once he started chilling for the DNC, I stopped watching. So I definitely won't be hitting the subscribe button or turning on notifications by clicking the bell. No way. It's very sad, I know.